Hi, everyone. So we're going to go right up here to present so that you can see the slideshow. And I'm going to walk you through it and give you some information as we go through. So today, you're going to do art with me. And we're going to make a really fun pumpkin drawing using pattern. But first, we're going to learn a little bit about the artist Yayoi Kusama, who, as you can see in this picture, loves dots and she uses dots to create pattern in all of her artwork. So let's learn a little bit about her. Okay, Yayoi Kusama from Here to Infinity. Here you will click on this little red circle and you will get to hear a story about Yayoi Kusama, which is very interesting to learn about her. She is a Japanese artist who came from Japan and lived in New York. This is a story about the artist Yayoi Kusama. It's called From Here to Infinity, and it's written by Sarah Suzuki, and it's illustrated by Ellen Weinstein. Yayoi Kusama was born in the country of Japan on the island of Honshu in a town called Matsumoto City. An old palace made of wood and stone overlooked a moat where swans swam. The streets were lined with little shops and snow-capped mountains rose in the distance, swallowing up the sun as it went down in the evening. Yayoi family owned nurseries where all kinds of flowers and vegetables grew, and workers tended the plants as they matured from seeds to sprouts to stalks. But Yayoi yearned for a different life, far from the countryside. She dreamed about what lay beyond the mountains in places far from Matsumoto City. She longed to leave home and see the world. Yayoi's mother wanted her to stay home and learn old-fashioned manners, how to dress elegantly, walk demurely, eat politely, and find a proper husband. But Yayoi wanted to be an artist. Every day she went outside with ink and brushes and paper. She drew things she saw and things she imagined. She looked closely at the pebbles that lined the riverbed and at the leaves and stalks of plants, and she drew them as chains of tiny cells that looked like dots. When she was older and studying in art school, her teachers disapproved of her work, and they demanded that Yayoi paint in the traditional, precise Japanese style. She wanted to go where she could live without rules. When she was 28 years old, she packed up her silk kimonos and thousands of drawings and stuffed dollar bills into the toes of her shoes. It was her first airplane trip. There were only four other passengers and the weather was stormy with rain and lightning. The airplane wobbled and dipped as it flew to America. In New York, Yayoi went to the top of the Empire State Building, the tallest building in a city full of tall buildings. When she looked down, she saw buses and cars and yellow taxis zooming up and down the avenues and bakers and teachers and artists rushing to work. From up on the 86th floor, they looked like dots. She felt very far from quiet Matsumoto City and her mother's rules. Here, it seemed, anything was possible. Yayoi set about turning her drawings of dots into paintings. The dollar bills that she had brought to America quickly ran out, and she spent what little money she had left on paints and canvases. She worked day and night. She painted when she was cold. She painted when she was hungry. She painted when she was lonely, and she turned her dots into sculptures too, into soft stuffed tubes that covered sofas 
and chairs and boats. She was devoted to her dots. For her, they were a way of thinking about the world among the stars, as one dot among millions of others. They were a way of thinking about infinity. Sometimes when she grew frustrated, she visited the Museum of Modern Art. She gazed at pa paintings for other artists and she thought about why and how they were made. She looked at pictures of dancing girls and swirling night skies, trying to solve them as if they were puzzles. Her paintings seemed so different from those she had seen at MoMA. When she at last was ready to show her work in public, she invited all the friends she had made in New York. When she arrived at the gallery, a crowd was spilling out onto the sidewalk. Her friends lifted her into the air, shouting, Yayoi, you finally done it! Word about her artwork spread quickly. Her friends told their friends, newspapers wrote about her, and reporters clamored to interview her about her dots. Now she began to show them in other cities all over the United States and Europe. Her dots were covering the world. They appeared in Venice in thousands of dot-shaped mirrors scattered over a big green lawn, on a pumpkin, on a pier, on dresses and t-shirts, on people walking down the street and in mirrored rooms where glowing dots were reflected and reflected again, an infinity of dots. Having visited many countries all over the world, Yayoi returned to Japan. The country had changed since she left with many different artists challenging the old traditional style as Yayoi had been doing all along. She still lives in Japan and she continues to paint her dots every day. Here are some examples of her artwork. Here is an example of one of her mirrored rooms. Another example of an installation called the Obliteration Room. And here is a real picture of her in one of her installations. I hope you enjoyed the story. And has gone back to Japan and still lives there now. She is 91 years old. She loves to use dots, as I told you before. And she loves to paint, write, make clothes, and create installations that she calls happenings. Um, these events take place in and outdoors and often use life-size sculptures that people can interact with. So if you ever have the opportunity to go see Yayoi Kusama in an exhibition or installation, um, like I said, she calls them happenings, then definitely take that opportunity because it is not to be missed. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about pattern. Yayoi uses dots. Um, but there's many different ways to create pattern. And pattern is a design in which lines, shapes, forms, colors can be used over and over and over again. And you can use them inter together or you can use them separately. So if you look at this, um, this is one of Yayoi Kusama's uh, paintings. She uses not only dots, but she uses some lines and she uses different sizes of dots and lines. And she creates some other interesting shapes 
on the trunk of this mushroom. Now, this is not a Yayoi Kusama, but if you look, they used the same shape and just fit it together throughout this whole piece of art. And it's the same shape, but they just changed the color. So again, it's a pattern that was created by changing the color. So just some things to look at. Okay, how do we use pattern in art? Here are some pattern examples of different types of pattern you can make, and I'm sure you probably could come up with a million different kinds of patterns, more than I could because my brain starts to just do the same thing over and over again. And there's nothing wrong with doing the same thing over and over again, because as you can see, Yayoi Kusama was very successful with her dots. So, just a review of what a pattern could be for us. If you think back to kindergarten, when we first learned about pattern and our teachers taught us about AB patterns, you might remember this. And if you don't, that's okay too, or an ABC pattern, okay? So here would be an AB pattern. So we have a big dot and then a medium-sized dot, a big dot and then a medium-sized dot. That would be an AB, AB pattern. Um, an ABC pattern means that you're going to have a third addition. So we have the big dot, the medium dot, and now a little dot. The big dot, a medium dot, and the little dot. So that would be ABC, ABC. And down here at the bottom, it's the same pattern that was up here for ABC, and it's still considered an ABC pattern. It's just that it's got three colors, so black, purple, and blue. It's still an ABC pattern. Now, in your work today, you can create as many patterns as you would like. The only rule is that you have to use the same color. We're not gonna use three colors, okay? And I'll go over that more in a few minutes. So, as I said, we will use only one color for our dots. We're gonna use black for the body of the pumpkin, and for the stem, you can use white. We will only change the dot size. So you can do big, medium, little, tiny, however many sizes you wanna use. And then we will create a different pattern for the background in the end. So the materials you need today are a pencil, a piece of white paper, a cr some crayons, and some markers. Okay, so the next step is you are going to watch this video and sketch out your own pumpkin on white paper. When I say sketch, that means use your pencil really lightly because you the other materials that we're gonna use on our paper will show the pencil marks in the paper if you press too hard. So you wanna draw very, very lightly, almost so that you can barely see the lines. Hello everyone. So today we're gonna create our own patterned pumpkin drawing, but first we're gonna start by doing just drawing or sketching a pumpkin. The difference between drawing and sketching with a pencil is that we don't want to press too hard, especially because of the medium or the type of coloring we are going to be doing. We're going to use markers and we're going to use crayons. And if we press too hard, the pencil will show through both of those in different ways. So we just want to sketch, which means you're going to draw very, very lightly, almost to the point that you can't really see it. So I'm gonna start by just kind of making a, kind of a scoop here. That's gonna be the top of my pumpkin. And then I'm gonna make kind of another scoop that goes the opposite direction on both sides, okay? And I'm making kind of a fat pumpkin, okay? I don't know if you can see that at all. I will zoom in a little bit so that you can see it. So you can kind of see my lines here, okay? I'm gonna come down around to make that round pumpkin-y shape. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then I am gonna connect it and kind of make it a little bit flat on the bottom so that it sits, okay? The next thing we need to do is sketch 
the stem. You can make your stem as long or as short as you would like. And you can make it fat or skinny, whatever you would like it to be, okay? So let me bring the paper up to the camera a little bit so that you can see the sketch a little bit better. So that's my stem. And here you can see it's really, really light so that when I go back over this, Hopefully it won't be seen, but we can always lightly erase it as well. One more thing that I forgot that I want you to do. <coughs> Let me zoom out just a little so that you can see. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is we need to put those lines in because we're gonna use those lines later. So the lines that come, that they're not really lines on a pumpkin, they're just indentations that make it look ribbed so we're going to put our rib lines in just by sketching and you want to kind of curve them down so that it looks like the pumpkin is round okay so the more you curve or less you curve is up to you you can also put them as close together as you want or as far apart as you want you just want to make sure that you probably have at least five or six ribbed lines and sometimes it's hard to get those rib lines the same curvature but that's okay not pumpkins aren't perfect i have one that's leaning to its side on my coffee table right now with a really big stem so remember we want to try and use our whole paper when we're drawing okay so there's my rib lines. Hopefully you can see those. And in just a moment, we're gonna get back and do some patterning on our drawing. Okay, so Kusama's Magic Dots is the next thing you're going to do. So you're first going to watch the video on how to do this, but it's basically going to show you how to create your pattern on your pumpkin. So please watch this video and then you can either choose to follow along with the video on your paper or complete this part after you watch the video. So now that we've drawn our pumpkin, we are going to very quickly practice making patterns so that we can then make a pattern on our pumpkin. So if you remember, Way back to kindergarten, we talked, you probably learned patterns. So you had an AB pattern, you may have had an ABC pattern, okay? Those are the two that really you need to think about, okay? So an AB pattern could be big, excuse me, <laughs> little, big, little, big, little, big, okay? If we go back, it would be AB, AB, AB. The next type of pattern would be an ABC pattern. So you're gonna have three different shapes. So we're only gonna be working with dots, which is why I am only drawing dots. So you have little, medium, and big. Little, medium, my medium's a little too big. Big, okay? So let's go back, A, B, C, A, B, C, okay? So you want to make your dots as best as you can to make them somewhat symmetrical, if you will, or circular, okay? They don't have to be perfect, but as close to perfect as you can make them, okay? Um, artists are not perfect. So what you're going to do is now on your pumpkin, this is why we drew very lightly, you are going to choose a line and you're going to choose either an AB pattern or an ABC pattern, whatever one you're comfortable with, and you want to make sure that you do it very well. So you might need to press a little bit hard with your black crayon, but you're going to use your black crayon and you're going to make a little pattern. I'm going to do an AB pattern on this one and you're going to do it right down the line. Kind of close together, not so close. They don't have to be touching each other, but you want them close, okay? You can do all of the lines down your pumpkin the same with a pattern or you can do them all different. That is up to you.
and maybe your pattern doesn't get to finish because it gets to the bottom of the pumpkin, okay? So that's one line. I'm gonna do this other line the same because I want to. You do not have to. You can, you are the artist, and because you are the artist, you get to choose what kind of pattern you want to do. Yayoi Kusama did a lot of the same patterns, but she varied them throughout her pumpkins. Make sure that they're colored in. And that one kind of went to the bottom of my... Now I'm gonna do another one on the outside. I'm gonna do this one in ABC pattern. So this is a very time consuming thing and you might get a little tired. It's okay if you need to stop and take a rest. Hands do get tired sometimes when you're using the same motion. Remember your pattern. Make sure you're saying your pattern in your head. That way you don't forget it. So now I'm gonna do this one over here. Kind of make it a symmetrical drawing. That means it's gonna look the same on both sides if I were divide it, if I were to divide it down the middle. Sometimes your dots might get a little out of control. I had one that just got a little out of control. That's okay. That's what makes your work your work and makes it unique. Sometimes we make mistakes and that's okay. It doesn't mean that we need to start over. We might be able to fix it or you just move on and you leave it be. It gives it character, okay? Okay, so I can do another pattern over here. And this one, I might just keep it all the same. And that's okay if you decide to do that. Again, it's going to give it character. You just want to create variety in your design. That means to change it up a little bit. the outside of my pumpkin. So for the outside of my pumpkin, I am going to continue to do dots. And for these, I'm just going to go along the outline of the pumpkin. And you can do a pattern if you want to. Or you can just keep the dots all the same size as long as we have a dotted outline of the pumpkin. Notice I am not drawing a jack-o-lantern. That is not what our lesson is about today. We are drawing a patterned pumpkin. And the reason we are doing this with crayon, and you have to do it with crayon, otherwise it will not work, is we're going to do something that's called a crayon resist. So when we get to the next step, you will see how cool this is. Now, I'm going to switch for just a minute to a different color of crayon. I'm going to use yellow for the top of the pumpkin for this stem piece, okay? And I'm going to just make dots all over that stem piece. I want it to be a little bit different and you'll see why in a minute. And I can do little dots in lines to make it look like them. Okay, so that's that step. Once you've gotten to that step, watch the next video and you will see the magic take place. So the next step after you've put all of your pumpkins, excuse me, all of your dots onto your pumpkin, you are going to color 
your pumpkin. And you will use either an orange marker or a yellow marker to color your pumpkin. And depending upon what color you use for your pumpkin might determine what color you want to use in the background. And then for your stem, you're going to either color, depending upon what crayon color you used for your stem, you can either use a black marker if you used white crayon, or if you used black crayon, then you can use a green marker to color in your stem. But watch the video below and that will help you with the direction of how to color it and what to do. Okay, for this next step, we are going to use markers, okay? So you are going to need an orange marker and you're going to need your a black marker and then you're going to need your drawing that has your patterns on it. Listen and follow directions very carefully so that you can make sure that your pumpkin drawing comes out the way you want it to come out, okay? so. This next step, you have to draw and color very, very carefully so that you stay within the lines, okay? So I'm going to carefully connect the dots. And what happens is because I'm using marker, notice it does not smear my crayon, okay? Because the wax of the crayons and the wetness of the marker do not match. They don't like it. So crayon, resists the moisture of the marker, okay? So you can make your lines all the way down and you might see a little bit of your pencil line if you didn't do it light enough and that's okay. It's a learning lesson. So now I'm going to carefully color and I like to just kind of make lines in the same direction as my pumpkin lines, as the folds in my pumpkin. That way I don't get a lot of overlap. Some, but not a lot. You might have minimal smearing of your crayons, but not a lot. If you go over them over and over again, then yes, it'll smear more. And I go back and co color in any white lines that I use. Let me make sure you guys are seeing this. Okay, so coloring. I am using my marker on its side because it has that wide tip towards the top. Rather than coloring on the narrow part of the marker, I'm turning it kind of on its side so that I can make big wide stripes rather than narrow stripes. But then when I go back to do my outlining up here, I can use just the small one because then I have more control. Okay, so I can come back down color. And then when I go to do these stripes, because they're on the inside, I can do them wide. Notice I'm not coloring fast. I'm taking my time, coloring slowly so that I get a nice color on there and it doesn't look all scribble scrabbly. And I can make sure that all my little white areas are covered. doing one section at a time carefully so that I can make it look like a drawing that I took my time on. Okay, it needs to look like a nice solid pumpkin, not a pum pumpkin that has white poking out all over the place. Okay, and my curves may not always follow everything, but that's okay. As long as I get it colored, helps to hold the paper down so it doesn't move all over the place for me. Go around that edge, outside edge, very carefully and slowly so that I don't go outside of my pumpkin lines. So that is the pumpkin, the body of the pumpkin. Now I'm going to work on the stem. Remember we used yellow on the stem. So now I'm going to switch to my black marker 
And this I have to be really careful with. And anytime you're using black in your art, that's the last color you should use because otherwise it will smear with other colors or wreck the other colors that you're using. So we don't wanna do that. So now you will be able to see that because I'm coloring over that yellow crayon, you will see how the marker resists, or the crayon resists the marker, okay? So we can see the yellow dots, just like what Yayoi Kusama had on her big, huge pumpkins that were made out of fabric. We are making dots and resisting them, okay? So that is where you're going to stop. Um, if, you're in in, if you're in TK, I would like you to stop here and just put your name down at the bottom. Um, if you're in kindergarten, you have the choice to keep moving on to the next step or you can stop here. But first and second grade, I would like you to try to do the next step. It's a little bit challenging, but I think you can handle it. So I will show you that video in just a minute. This is a little bit tricky. So again, there's a video to show you what to do. And so what you're going to do is you're going to use your yellow crayon to draw lines in the background as shown. And then you will use either a blue marker or a purple marker to color in the background. But you need to do this very carefully. So really watch the video before you try to complete the background because you want to make sure you don't mess it up. It's really cool when it comes out at the end. Okay, so at the end of the last video, I had said that um, if you're a kindergartner, you have the choice to do this part of the project or you can stop. Um, if you're in first or second grade, I would like you to try your very best to do this next step. So this next step involves a white crayon and you have a choice. You may use a blue marker or a purple marker. I'm not sure yet which one I'm gonna use, but I'll let you know when I get there. So first, we're gonna put those markers away because we're not doing that next. The first step is using our white crayon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw lines across the background of our pumpkin. We're not gonna go on top of our pumpkin because that will ruin our pumpkin, okay? So we are going to do only on the outside white part of the page. So I'm just gonna start drawing kind of diagonal lines. So not lines that go straight up and down, they're gonna go across the page diagonally. And you can't see them very well because they're white, but I promise you they will be there when we go to do the next part, okay? They will be there. So just like our black crayon and our yellow crayon resisted the marker before, we are going to, now I'm gonna go diagonal the other direction and see what happens. I have no idea if I'm crossing over lines or what they're gonna look like, but I'm making them. Notice I am not touching any of the black. I'm not touching any of my orange or my yellow because I don't want my lines to mess up that first design that I had. Sometimes it's hard because the paper likes to move. And I am going to choose purple. Here is the reason why I'm going to choose purple. It's a nice dark color for your background. Blue also is. But I'm thinking about complementary colors. Complementary colors are friends. They like each other, but they're opposites. And yellow and purple are complementary, are complementary friends on our color wheel. And we can talk about that in another time. So I'm going to use that as my background color. So I am just going to color around my pumpkin very, very carefully. So, and I like to put... right up next to my orange pumpkin. And I'm just gonna make lines. And as you can see, my white lines that I don't even know where they were, 
are now going to show up. And if I go right up next to that orange, the black will also resist the purple marker. So I am left-handed, which is not a bad thing. It's just that it makes it sometimes difficult for people like you to see what I'm doing because sometimes I cover up my work. I have to move this a little bit so that I can reach it. It's okay to move your artwork around so that color comfortably or draw comfortably. You need to be able to do it and enjoy it. Art is supposed to be fun. So where you see those white lines that are crossing over each other, you are seeing where my crayon was. So I'm gonna continue by kind of outlining my pumpkin because that makes it easier for me to do my background without coloring over my pumpkin. And again, I'm not scribble scrabbling back and forth. I'm kind of just using that wide tip of my marker to, it looks like I missed a spot with my crayon. That's okay. That's what makes it magical, right? Okay, and that is your finished pumpkin drawing, your Kusama pumpkin drawing, okay? And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have your name down there in that corner to say, hey, look at my artwork. Okay, have fun with this. Okay, so the very last step of this art project is for you to complete a flip grid. So when you have completed your pumpkin and it looks something similar to what you see here on this page, you are going to go to this link below here where it says the codes and you're going to click on flip grid, on that flip grid link. It's there. Okay, so it's going to bring you here to the Flipgrid page, and you are going to click up here on this play button to watch the video to get the directions of what you're supposed to do. Then when you're done watching that video, you'll come over here to this record a response button. You will click on that button. You will then follow the directions to create your video. And when you're done, submit it. And then I will get to see your artwork and get to meet you. And I'm so excited to be able to be able to work with you and create art with you. So have fun.